Hi, this is Matt at PrepRes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve repeating pattern questions on the ACT. Now, these questions often seem really, really tricky to students when they first see them on practice tests, but they're super easy once you know how to solve them. All right, so let's learn how to do these repeating pattern questions. Now, I'm going to be using our soon-to-be-released uh, ACT math book here to go through this. So first of all, what do I mean when I say repeating patterns questions? Well, if you might have seen a question before in the test where it asks you, like, what's the 307th decimal place in the repeating pattern or repeating decimal 0 0.3462 that's a repeating patterns question or what's the units digit of 70 to the 103rd power that's also repeating powers or sorry repeating patterns question so we'll start with our repeating decimals so with repeating decimal we're talking about something like this if we see 0 0.1234 with that line on the top that's telling us this decimal repeats it just goes 0 0.1234123412341234 over and over and over again now the way we're going to be able to use the, um, the repeating pattern to our advantage is we're going to go to the end of the pattern. So we're going to basically look at the fours. And the way this pattern repeats is it goes 0 0.1234 over and over. So what we can do is we know that every four, 0 0.1234, this right here is our fourth one. The next four is going to be our eighth after the decimal point, then 12, and then 16. So what's going to happen is every time we hit the end of that pattern, every time we get to a 4 is going to be when the value after the decimal point is a multiple of 4, because it repeats every 4. So if it was 40 after the decimal, it'd be a 4. 44 after the decimal would be a 4. 400, 4,000, all multiples of 4 are going to be at the 4. So we can use that kind of pattern to count way down the pattern and solve something like here, example number 1, which says... What is the 307th place after the decimal point in the repeating pattern 0 0.34562? So here, again, it's going to repeat. So we can kind of use the pattern, and we're going to go to the end of it again. So we're going to look at the twos. So it goes 0 0.34562 over and over again. Now what we go into the end of the pattern is that the twos are all going to appear now at the multiple of 5. So every time we get to a 2, it's going to be a multiple of 5. So what I'm looking for here is I want to find a multiple of 5 that's near 307. Because I know at that multiple of 5, we're going to be at the 2. Well, what's a multiple of 5 near 307? 305. So there's going to be a 2 at the 305th digit after the decimal point. From there, we can just keep writing the pattern out. It goes 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, and then it repeats and goes 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. If 305 is going to be a 2, we can count forwards to basically spa spaces. So we'll get to 306 will be a 3, 307 will be a 4. That's how we solve our first one there. So let's do one more of those to make sure you understand it. So we'll go to example 2 down here, which is... What is the 703rd place after the decimal point in the repeating decimal 0 0.596127? Well, same concept here, except now we have 6. So if we write this repeating pattern out, we're looking at the end again. And every time we hit a 7, it's going to now be a multiple of 6. So every time we get a 7, it's a multiple of 6. So what we're looking for now is I want to find a multiple of 6 that is near 703. And to do that, you can basically pick up your calculator. You can do 703, divide it by 6, and then round that to the nearest whole number. And then multiply by 6, you'll find out what a value is. So we end up here that finding that 702, if you do the math, ends up being a multiple of 6. So here, we know that at 702, 702 points after the decimal point, it's going to be a, sorry, not a 7, it's going to be a 6. Uh, sorry, not a 6, a 7. Sorry, I wrote the wrong thing there. So it's a multiple of 6, so we're going to be at the end of the pattern with a 7. From there, we can just continue the pattern. So it goes 5, 9, 6, 1, 2, 7, and then repeats. It will go 5, 9, 6, 1, 2, 7. So if 702 is a multiple of 6, which means we're at the end of the pattern, 703 will be the next one, which is going to be a 5. So our correct answer is B. So these types of questions are the ones that can appear a little bit earlier in the ACT. It could be late in those last 15, 20 questions, but it could also appear somewhere in the 20s and 30s as it has on some of the more recent tests. 
So that's how we solve these ones. And these are your easier type of repeating patterns questions. Now, the next type we can see is repeating powers with the unit digit, which is those weird like seven to the power of something questions. And these ones are confusing. Now, first of all, let's clarify, what do I mean by the units digit? The units digit can also be called the ones place. It's, let's say if I have a number like this, 945, the units digit is a five, it's just the ones place, or if it's 1,381 units digit, or the ones place is a one. It's just basically what the end of the number is. So let's say we see a question like this, which is where a lot of students get stumped in the ACT. What is the units digit of seven to the 122? And you might go, ooh, I'll grab my calculator and punch it in. It won't work. Your calculator will spit out an error or it'll spit out something in scientific notation where you can't actually see what the value is. So what we can use here is there's actually a pattern with these. And the pattern is written out below. So seven to the first power is just seven. Seven squared is 49, so there's a nine in the units digit. Seven cubed is 243, so there's a three. Seven to the fourth is 2401. And then if we do seven to the fifth, it gets to 16,807. Seven to the sixth ends in a nine. You might have already seen the pattern here forming. Seven to the seventh ends in a three and then ends in a one. So as you kind of look at those ones underline, it goes seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine, three, one. So it does that over and over and over again. So if we were writing out just the units digit, it would look like a repeating pattern, kind of like what we just did. Seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine, three, one. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use the end of that pattern again. So we are going to basically look down here at the end of the pattern. Because every time I see a one, it's going to be, so we see right below here, the one is going to be every time it's multiple of four. So if it was like seven to the 12th power or seven to the 40th power, those are both multiples of four. There, those numbers are going to end in a one. So how can we use that pattern to our advantage? Well, we can do the same thing we did before. We are looking for a multiple of four near seven to the 122 or find out if that is a multiple of four. So you can take your calculator, do 122 divided by four. If that gives you a whole number, we go, yay, it's multiple of four. Here it doesn't, but 120 is a multiple of four. So seven to the 120 is gonna end in a one. So that means we're gonna be basically down here at the bottom of our pattern. So if that ends in a one, we can basically keep the pattern going. So we're just gonna go up. So if that's seven to the 120, seven to the 121 would end in a seven because we're following our pattern. Seven to the 122 would end in a nine. So again, we're just counting two spots forward in our same seven, nine, three, one pattern. And we end up getting two, as I said, the correct answer here is gonna be E, it's gonna end in a nine. <clears throat> so that seems really, really hard, but with these ones, you can either memorize, I'll show you more of these patterns in a minute. You can memorize these or just use your calculator and write them out on test day. They pretty much always repeat in your patterns of four. Now, if the AST wants to be mean, they could present this in an even more confusing way. And this will be a really like end of test, super hard question. So let's say example four here. It says three to the X has a nine in the ones place. What digit does three to the X plus three have in the ones place? Now threes are also a pattern and we can see the pattern down here <clears throat> with our ones place or our units digit. Three to the first is three, three squared is nine, three cubed is 27, three to the fourth is 81, three to the fifth is 243 and you see our pattern is happening again. Now it goes three, nine, seven, one, three, nine, seven, one. So, you probably see where we're going with this one. We're gonna use the end of the pattern. And we know that every time something is to a multiple of four, the power that is, it's gonna end in a one. So that's the kind of pattern we can use. Now this one, it says three to the X has a nine in the ones place. What does three to the X plus three uh, have? So there's two ways to do this. One way, the more kind of advanced way to solve this question is to go, well, using the pattern, if we're say here at a nine in the ones place, three to the X plus three is gonna be three, one, two, three more steps down the line, which means using our pattern, it's gonna be B. And that's a harder way to solve this question. An easier way to solve this question and kind of a cheat way is to go, well, what could X be? Well, if X is two, you probably all know that three squared is nine. So if X is two, this becomes three to the two plus three, 
which is same as three to the five. If you punch that in your calculator, or we look at our little chart below we already have, that'd be 243 with tens and a three. So there's always kind of look for ways to kind of cheat these questions or plug in values if you can, but that's where we can use the pattern to solve. So down below here, we have kind of the most commonly tested ones you're gonna see on the test. We have the twos, the threes, the sevens, the eights. You're welcome to pause and write these down or take a screenshot of these. Um, but, or again on testing, you just kind of write them down. Patterns like these will always, almost always repeat in fours and these are the most common ones you'll see on testing. Now the last repeating patterns things we can see on the test are imaginary numbers. And if you don't know what this I or what these complex or imaginary numbers mean, go watch my video on that. It will explain them way more in depth. For now, we're just gonna go over the pattern. Because I's also have a pattern that, you guessed it, repeats in fours. So I to the first power is just I. I squared is negative one. And again, for those of you who don't know what I is or have forgotten, I is the same as the square root of negative one. That's why I squared is negative one. I cubed is negative I and I to the fourth is one. And then as you can see, this pattern repeats. It goes I, negative one, negative I, positive one, over and over and over again. So we're gonna use, again, the bottom of our pattern. We know every time I is two, a multiple of four, it's gonna equal one. So let's say we have one weird question like this. So 10 I to the 47th minus seven is equal to what? Okay, well, what are we gonna do to solve this? Well, to solve this, we need to figure out what the heck I to the 47th is. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a multiple of four near 47, I to the 48th, or I to the 44, or both. I'll put that one up here, why not? Those are both multiples of four. So that means, say if we're doing I to the 44, we'd be here in the pattern. So we can go forward and count, 44, 45, 46, 47. So using that pattern, or if you did I to the 48th, you could count it back one. Either way, this tells us that I to the 47 is equal to negative I. So all we need to do here, as we did down below, is plug it in. So if I to the negative 47 is the same as negative I, 10 times negative I minus seven is just negative 10 I minus seven, which ends up being our correct answer here is A. Now, one more of these, and again, this would be a little more advanced one. For number six, it says, if K is a multiple of four, I to the four K plus one equals what? All right, well, the easiest way to solve this question is to just pick a value for K. So let's say K is a multiple of four. So four is a multiple of four, or we could pick K is eight. I'll use four to make it easy, but any number you pick here would work. So we can just basically plug it in. So if I to the four K plus one, that becomes I to the 17. Now we should use our pattern. So remember with our pattern up here, we said every multiple of four, I'll erase my mess so we can see it better. Every multiple of four was equal to one on the bottom of the pattern. So we know I to the 16th is a multiple of four, which equals one. The next one on the pattern, I'll go back up the pattern so we can see, is going to be just I. So I to the 17th is going to be the same as I. So the correct answer there is going to be C. So with these repeating pattern questions, what you can see is we use the same principle for pretty much all of these guys. What we did, number one, is we identified what is repeating. Is it a decimal that's repeating? Is it the powers and the units digits that are repeating? We figured out what the unit was, and then we went to the end of it. So we went to the end of the decimal, the bottom of the power, and then we're able to figure out basically where we land. You know, is it, we're looking for multiple four, multiple six, something near our target number. Once we're there, we can count forwards or backwards. So again, these are questions, the decimals points will um, appear kind of in the middle of the test or the end of the test. The powers ones, the I patterns will definitely appear towards the end of the test, some of those last 15, 20 questions. But now that you've seen how to solve these guys, they should be easy on test day.
Hope you guys enjoyed that video and learned a lot along the way. If you did, please like the video. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out more SAT and ACT content. And if you're really ready to start preparing for the ACT, if you go to the pinned comment below, you can check out a free trial of our ultimate ACT course. The free trial alone has four and a half hours of videos of me giving you more expert tutoring, going through some grammar rules, more math topics, reading strategies, science tips, all stuff that will make you guys more prepared to go crush the ACT on testing. Other than that, this is Matt at Prep Pro signing off. I will see you guys next time.